Oh boy, this is so refreshing. To say the least, this is so refreshing. Here is the testimony of a pastor, a former pastor who was a Baptist, but he's discovered the truth of the Sabbath and changed his entire denomination. He's now testifying. This is going to encourage your faith. It's going to show you that God is working. It doesn't matter what the devil is doing. Let's keep going. Let's take a listen to this. Good morning, everyone. And I've got to say these two beautiful words that I love so much. Happy Sabbath. I could not always say those words, but I say it now with so much passion, so much excitement. Because, yes, it's good. And I'll tell you, I finally got it right. I finally got it right. For 56 years, my mind was blinded to the truth. The devil kept me blinded to this wonderful message, this truth. But now the word's out. The word's out. I know the truth, and he done messed up. But I'm telling everybody, amen. My goal is everybody that I see, I'm going to tell them about this wonderful truth that I have now. Praise his name. I, I was born um, in a, to a Christian mom and dad. When, when I was born, my parents were believers. And uh, I was born on a Sunday uh, morning. And they tell me that on Wednesday evening that they had me in church, Wednesday evening. Now, I don't remember that, of course. I was only four days old, but they tell me that. But I do remember growing up in church that I can count on one hand how many times I've ever missed going to church growing up in my life. So I grew up with a family that loved the Lord. They were not Sabbath keepers. We were Baptist, and, but that's all that I knew growing up. But we went to church every Sunday morning, every Sunday evening, Wednesday night. I grew up in church. They dedicated me to the Lord. And I knew at an early age that God had his hand on my life. When I was nine years old, I repented. I received the message. I repented. I was baptized, and I received him as my Lord. And I knew at nine years old that God had called me to be a pastor. I didn't know the word pastor at that time was the associated word, but as I look back, I know that I was to be a pastor at nine years old because the hand of God was on my heart. And I grew up knowing that. And so I have a wonderful heritage of Christian background. I just didn't have this truth about the Sabbath. I just didn't have it. And so when I was 20 years old, I, I answered that call and I went to college and Bible college and then I finally made it through seminary and so forth and got a degree and all of that and started pastoring a church and I've been pastoring now for 35 years but I pastored a Sunday church or Sunday churches for 35 years and I preached the truth of what I knew to be the truth all of that time and we decided that uh, God was leading us to begin a Christian school and so we started a Christian school in Huntsville 14 years ago and the beautiful thing is because Huntsville has such an Im impact with Adventists there because of Oakwood and, and an Adventist population there is pretty heavy, heavy, several of the Adventist families have chosen to put their children in our school. Now I'm telling you that God planted them there for me because I didn't know the message. <laughs> Amen now. Amen. And so these children came to my school. Mm. And for all of these years, I kind of kept a watchful eye on these families and these children. And I was wondering, well, why would anybody want to waste a good Saturday going to church? And so I kind of had that, that looking down on you type of an attitude. I'm thinking, why don't you just not go on Saturday because that's the day of football game and fishing and all of that. But why don't you just come to our church on Sunday and let's just do it right? That was kind of my attitude. But there were some of these students that had the, uh, the calling on their heart that they would come to my office and they would say, Pastor Reggie, could I talk to you for a minute? And I would say, sure, because my door was always open. And there was this one young lady a few years ago came in and she began telling me about the Sabbath message. And I was listening to her, very politely listening, but I, I didn't open my heart to it. After all, I had a, a Ph.D., you know, and, and uh, I was not going to be listening to a 10th grade girl tell me about doctrinal things. But I was polite as a pastor. 
So we sat there and we talked and so forth. We didn't argue. I just listened to her and all along thinking, yeah, that's right. She just, she'll learn one day. But I kept looking at the families. And you know what I discovered? That those Adventist families that God planted into our school, those Adventist families, they loved on me. They cared for me. They gently guided me. They just consistently lived and walked out their faith. And I remember one, one time we had a basketball game on a Friday evening. We didn't have a, 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 a charge of the schedule, and the game happened to be on a Friday evening. And so one of our very best players was an Adventist a student, and his dad came, and we had the Friday, it was a Friday afternoon game, and I noticed that right about uh, 30, 45 minutes before sundown, right in the middle of the game, the dad come and he took his children, and they left. Yeah, and I took notice of that. I think, why? And I know why he's doing that, because they're going to church. But the thing I'm trying to say is these families was consistent. They loved their God. They believed their message, and they walked in truth, and they did it with love. <laughs> Beautiful. And then one day, Beautiful. this very man who I was telling you that took his children uh, out of the game, he came to me one day and he said, Pastor Reggie, his name is Guy Jusang, for those of you that might would know him. He said, Pastor Reggie, he said, you know, you and I, we have a great relationship and we have, his children have been in our school five, six years. And I said, sure. He said, can I talk to you for a moment? I said, sure, come on in. And he said, you know, Pastor, he said, I've got the book that I would like for you to read. He said, now, you know, we've read the book. In my family, we believe the things that are in this book, but, you know, we might have it wrong. We, we might be deceived on something here. Now, buddy, was he, he was setting me up here, huh? <laughs> setting me up. And he said to me, he said, you know, Pastor, he said, I really appreciate you. You've got a Ph.D. in theology and all that. He said, do you mind reading this book here? And it was the Ten Commandments, twice removed. <laughs> he said, would oh, you boy. just read the book? And at the end of the book, just uh, tell me what you think about it. And if there's anything wrong with That's the book, funny. please love me enough to come and tell me so that I can get it right. <laughs> and boy, he was really stroking that ego thing. Huh? And I said, well, sure, brother, I'll be glad to read that book. And all along, I'm thinking, here's my chance. I'm going to get it straight with these folks. So I took the book and I read it. I read through this book the first time. And I've got to tell you something. It literally shocked me what I read. I mean to tell you, it shocked me. Even though I had a Ph.D., I'd never learned this before. And I said, well, you know, there's got to be uh, more to this. Maybe I just read it too quickly. And so I decided that I would read the book again. So I read every page. And there it begins sinking in, and I begin thinking, you don't think that maybe I've had it wrong all this time. And I began learning about Constantine and all the stuff that happened there in the Catholic Church and how that we began following after that tradition. And then I began thinking, well, maybe I have had it wrong. Let me read it a third time. And so I read it three times. And at the end of the third time, I was so stirred in my heart, I said, I've got to let my wife read this book. And so I took it home, and I had not told her that I had read the book. Oh, she didn't know the history that beautiful. you just now know. Mm -hmm. I just handed her the book, and I said, Honey, would you read this book? And just at the end of it, just tell me what you think mm. about it. That's all I said. Just tell me what you think about it. She said, Sure. And so she read the book. She read it like one night. It was only 128 pages. She just read the book, and I was there. I remember the very moment that she finished the last page, because I was waiting to hear what she said. She closed the book, and she looked at me, and I said, What do you think? She said these words. I'm going to quote you verbatim. She said, Reggie, this is a no-brainer. Why aren't we doing this? And I said, honey, I don't know why we're not doing that. Let me read the book again. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm a slow learner. Let's go. <laughs> so the bottom line is I read this book five times. I, actually, I've read it more than that, but at that point, it was five. I'm telling you, this is the best book I've ever read. This book right here. It's the very best book I've ever read outside the Word of God. Because this book is personal to me, because this book enlightened me to the truth. And so after I read it five times, she and I, we embraced, and we said, Dear God, 
we are so sorry that we have never had this truth before. And for 35 years, I've been teaching people the wrong message. I did it with the right heart, the right attitude, but I had the wrong message. And you know, you can have the wrong message and have it be sweet about it, but it's still wrong. Yep, yep, yep. And That's so right. I determined, and we determined, that God would have us to make a, a lifestyle change. Someone mentioned that here today. It was a total lifestyle change. It wasn't just changing our day. It was changing our entire lifestyle. Yes. I mean, I at that point decided I'm going to give up my pork chops, my catfish, my shrimp. Yeah, I gave it all up for the Lord. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. Lifestyle change. Yes, sir. This is so sweet. So we were so excited and happy about this wonderful truth of the Sabbath that we had learned how that it's God's holy day. And he told us to keep it holy. He didn't tell us to make it holy. He did that. So he just said for us to remember it and not forget it and to keep that day set aside and to give ourselves to That's him that day that he would come and visit with us and he would it. put a blanket of his love on us and he would make it a sign to us. That's right. And so it. we decided, yes, Lord, we want that in our life. Yes, and we so do. we decided we would make this lifestyle change and she and I were so happy He's preaching. we had a church full of folks that didn't know. And we decided, well, we've got to go tell them. So the very next Sunday... The very next Sunday, it was showdown time. And they didn't know what I was about to say, and I didn't know what they was about to say. And I told them. I told them what I've just shared with you. And I didn't know what they were going to do, but I let them know. I said, listen, this is just something that, that God has spoken to me about, to my wife. And we have made a determination and a commitment to God that our lifestyle is changing, our message is changing. We will honor the Lord. We will keep His Sabbath day holy. And that's the message we're going to begin preaching. And we're going to be uh, changing our worship days to Sabbath day. And if you can join us and you would like to join us, we welcome you. If you can't, we love you anyway. And I didn't know what they were going to say. That's bold. That's bold. That's called faith. But praise be unto the name of the Lord, every single person in the church, <laughs> every one of them. Ah, oh, that's Glory amazing. Glory to his name. Glory to God. Yes. yes. My, my. Yes. Faith, my God. Woo -hoo. Praise Are you his listening name, to this? Lord. Are you listening to this? Mm. <laughs> This Every is what the Lord is doing. person in the church came this is what to the Lord us is that doing. night and they said to me, Pastor Reggie, we don't understand all of what you're doing and why you're doing it, but we see the passion in you. We love you. You've been our pastor. We trust you, and we will follow your leadership. And from that Sunday on, we've never met on a Sunday, and we then started meeting on Sabbath. And what we do is that we usher it in. I mean to tell you, it's a celebration for us. It's a celebration. Oh, yes. And I got to tell you something. I know that you, you, you meet on Sabbath morning here. We can't wait that long. No, we can't wait that long. We have to do it at the beginning, at sundown Friday night, right when it's coming in. We say, Lord, we love this day. We love the Sabbath day, Lord. It's your holy day. And it's a celebration unto His greatness in our life. And so our whole church then began to grow in numbers. I thought it was going to shrink, but it grew. <laughs> and it grew. And I must tell you this, and then my time is up. But Beautiful. You see, we started as a mm. Christian school 14 years ago. I had pastored many years before, and we were starting a school, and I wasn't necessarily intending on attaching a church to that. I was just going to do a Christian school. But we had some families within our school that um, started coming uh, to us and, and was not churched in any church. And, and they said, hey, could, could we just do a Bible study? And so that pastor thing inside me said, sure. And so we just started a little, a little group, a little Bible study group. And I really wasn't wanting the responsibility of a church again and a school and all of that. And I jokingly said to the pastors around the town, I said, guys, you know, I'm probably the only pastor in town that prays that his church don't grow. You know, and I was joking, but you know what? And I got to tell you this. I was saying that in a joking way, but I found out that that offended the Lord. 
And one day the Holy Spirit just sort of thumped me right here on the chest and he said, Reggie, I don't ever want you to say that again because it's not your church. The church belongs to Jesus. And he said, and I want it to grow. And I stopped saying that and I said, Lord, let this church grow. And when I started, uh, when my wife and I and our church started receiving Sabbath and honoring Sabbath day and started worshiping and getting it right and, and following the message the best that we know how, and we still probably don't have it all right, but our heart is we're going to do right. And you know what? As we started doing that, then that church started swelling and growing. And our little old sanctuary, it's not as big as it, but it's going to be. Oh, it's going to be. It's going to be. Because they're coming. Yeah, they're coming. It just spills out. And they just start coming in from all over the place. And you know what? The final thing I want to say to you is thank you. You know, people are hungry for the truth. And you've got mm. the truth. This mm. denomination has the truth. Y y yeah. And thank God for the Adventists. How that the say that again. This denomination has the truth. Uh, we thank heard you. God for the Adventist, how that the Lord has used the Adventist church to take me and to help me understand revelation. You've lived your life consistently, and I, even though I don't know you personally, I know how people look at you, how the Christian world looks at you, how that we look down upon you. Uh, you I don't anymore, but how I used to look down upon you. And, uh, and just thinking, you know, you just got this thing wrong, and you're caught, and you're crazy, and all. I used to say those things. And boy, didn't God do a good thing, put me right in the middle of you here, huh? <laughs> Glory to his name. <laughs> so God bless you. Thank you. And, and bless the name of the Lord. He's a good God. Yes. Happy Sabbath. Yes. Let's go. That was refreshing With these folks. and uplifting. Here goes a man, an honest man, a good man, a sincere man, a man of faith. By the way, I believe there are hundreds and thousands of these men. They we either haven't heard their stories or they have yet to come out. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, the truth is so powerful that it will conquer hearts. And there's a number of things I've learned here. Adventists, we, we seven Adventists, we got to keep living to every single teachings that we claim and, and preach. We got to live it and reflect the truth that we proclaim. Do not compromise your position ever because the world is paying attention. And also do ministry, share the word, speak, preach the word, share the literatures, give away the books, give them away. Let them put them in the trash if they have to, but at least give them an opportunity to hear. Um, and also this tells us that people are hungry. Like he said, people are hungry for the truth. And we do have the truth as God lives, we do, we do. And God has his children everywhere. We have a job to do to proclaim the gospel to as many as possible. Some of them will listen and will accept. Some of them will believe. We must preach the word. Friends, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm excited. This has always joy to my heart. I, I spend time online listening to these people, fighting with some of these people. And every now and then you hear a message that is uplifting, just like you just heard right now. There goes an honest man who uplift your spirit and says, hey guys, you, you doing it right. <laughs> you, you keep on doing it. Calling us cult and all kind of crazy name is ridiculous. No, that's not you. This is why the Bible says, friends, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instead in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and doctrine. Friends, we are in a time today where the seventh day Adventist movement, you, you, you can't sugarcoat this message. You wonder why I keep making these videos is because I, I, I got to get through the Internet airwaves, man. The, the information airwaves. This is one of the means through which many people are listening. So you keep on talking. I've read comments where people said, you know what? You've convinced me, man. You've convinced me. I said, I, I convinced you. That was the word of God. <laughs> I've gotten those email that says, James, I'm keeping the Sabbath. <laughs> I got an email recently. Somebody said, I'm going to church. I'm going to an Adventist church. <laughs> I'm going to an Adventist church. I'm telling you, 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 you don't know what is going on with the word of God. And as long as you have the truth, you just keep on preaching. You just keep on living. You just keep on 
a teaching. You just keep on telling it. Um, they may hate you. <laughs> they may get mad. Some will, but there are some whose hearts are sincere, like this minister right here. They're going to say, you know what? This is the word of the Lord. I will follow Jesus wherever he leads me. And that right there is what we should be looking for. And I don't have anything else to say. I'm just excited. I'm happy. I just wanted to encourage your faith. If you happen to be a Christian, Seventh-day Adventist, it's not time to be discouraged. It's not time for us to sugarcoat our message. It's not time to shy away and hide the light. Let it shine, baby. Let it shine. Let it shine brighter and, 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 and clearer and, and broader than ever before. Don't sugarcoat that message. Proclaim it from the rooftop. Go online, start a YouTube channel, make some noise <laughs> because we have the truth as God lives. I'm done talking. We can move on from there. Share your thought and perspective with me. Have a good one.